All right. So, cause we're gonna get right into it. Mm -hmm. right? We're gonna get right into it. Oh, oh, mm -hmm. my bad, my bad, my bad. I'm glad. I'm glad my cut. See, that's why I need you, cause mm -hmm. that's why I need you. Go ahead and do, you know, uh, what is what is very dear to our show, uh, <clears throat> Miss Miss Christina said. I'm actually from Springville, Springfield, Missouri. Close enough. Uh, and Miss Marla said, "What's going on?" We'll tell you in a minute, Miss Marla. Um, go ahead, Cuzzy. Greetings and salutation, tactics on street tactics. Our conversations with Crete and Sweet Mama G. Welcome to another Friday. I feel it's going to be full of foolishness. Thank you so much. Today is August the 4th, 2023 at 9.44 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you all for coming in. Make sure you continue to like, share the podcast. Let everybody we on know we're on, and we talking about toxic people, such as some people we know and love, but that's all right. So we're going to do our mental health check-in from one through five, five being your most favorite. Why you look up like me? You got a problem, sir? You got a problem? I do, because I, okay. I, sometimes you be slick, and I'm just trying to pay, pay attention to your I'm out of my business. I didn't look at you. I didn't do okay. none of that. I'm out of my business. Right. Somebody feeling guilty, y'all. Mm-hmm. So one through five, five being your most fabulous down to one, where you need more self-care and support. I'm mad that we still got this um, Cisco Chinese red symbol on my face and my fingers, looking like a wedding ring, depending on how I put my fingers up. Look at y'all. I'm going to change. I'm going to so, change. One through five, please throw up your mental health. Let us know how you're feeling. I'm a five right now because I know it's going to be something funny tonight. I was a three because I had to wake up from my nap. But since I got a nap, I feel full of foolishness. So I'm going to be a five for right now. Now, Mr. Creeks, what is your numbers? Five. You're always going to be a five. Okay. Always going to be a five. I try to tell people it's wicked and as unstable as this world we're living in, you still have to maintain sanity. You cannot let What's going on out here overcome you. You can't think that you're the only one that all this is happening to. It's happening to everybody and all different type of businesses, walks, races, whatever you want to try to throw in that mix. Everybody. So that's another reason why this show is important, because we can come and talk with one another, encourage one another and listen to Sweet Mama G. Go ahead. I forgot what I was going to say because wow. I just started reading the comments. So some of the comments. Thank you so much, Creed. Miss Christina says she's a three because she's horny. LOL. Miss Muller says she's a five. <laughs> five. Darren said, Creed, when are when you going to bring that female life coach on the show? She looked decent. Who are you talking I'm about? Female life. Who are you talking about? Darren, the level up coach. Who, who are you talking about? Mr. Darren Millie's number five. five. Darren a five. Marla says, really, Miss Christina? And Marla says, skip Christina comment, Creek. <laughs> nope. I'm trying I to really figure out who, who we talking about. The white lady. Female coach. You talking about Ch um, Chelsea? Oh, we talking about Chelsea. Yeah, that's who we talking about. Why you want to <laughs> bring her on here? You don't like Sweet Mama G? Answer in the comments. Oh, uh, I was like, what was it? Yeah, so so anyway. Mm. Uh so uh, are we finished with our um yeah, we're gonna still continue checking this evening because I feel like I might pop pop off, but go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Darren said yes, her. Maybe one day, but as for now, you have us. And then Miss Mahala said, Oh my. I like my tea on sweeten, sweet mama G. I don't know what that means. Me either. Uh <laughs> okay. All right, cousin. All right. I, I, I'm late getting this on here. Uh on, on not on the show, but on this because mm -hmm. I know how y'all play games. So tonight our topic is she toxic or he toxic? <laughs> that is the question, right? Now uh, Miss Marla said, "Give some of that drink af after Christina 
commenting. Give me some. <laughs> oh boy. So um, all right. So she toxic or he toxic, right? That is the question. That is the topic of tonight. We're gonna start it like this. Relationships today and in the past has ups and downs. And most times it's because of it's because it uh could be an underlying case of toxicity. We will have a deep talk in reference to toxicity being in a relationship. Okay. Can we do that? Can we do that, everyone? So, cousin, you know, sometimes in relationships, some people go through abuse because it comes in many different ways, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and to name a few, some of them, or just a few of them, it comes by physical abuse, emotional abuse, verbal abuse, or financial abuse. Can you agree? Mm-hmm. Okay. So let's test ourselves to see whether if, uh, we're in toxic relationships or have you been in a toxic relationship and also to prevent yourself getting into a toxic relationship. How but you, you also doing? have to, I want to add sexual as well. Yes. Um, sexual needs to be added because there's a lot of people who go through sexual trauma or abuse or manipulation in relationships. Absolutely, cousin. Absolutely. Um, shouts out to Nate from upstate in the building. What's going on, my brother? Good to hey. good to see you here. Um okay, so here's one right here. We're gonna start it off, and y'all know how we do. Y'all can come in on the comments. Anytime y'all want, and I'm going to be popping that link up on the uh, screen here in a little bit. And if y'all want to jump on, jump on the camera, come on the show, y'all welcome. We family in here, right? We don't discriminate anybody. None of that. This is our platform, the platform of the people, right, Cuzzy? Uh -huh. All right. So uh -huh. let's go with one. And Miss Christina said Me Too about something. I guess the Me Too movement or something. I don't know. Um, now, first, we want to say this is how you recognize that you are in a toxic relationship. Your significant other always finds something wrong with you. I Have believe. any of you guys ever experienced that? How about you, cousin? Uh, it's not even just... Um romantic relationship it can be platonic or just simple relationships if you got a person that's always complaining about things you're doing or how you look what's going on in your life then they're toxic you're right cousin you're right a lot of people and i mean just because they're your friend don't mean they can't get cut off hm. very true now you know let's just say oh we got nate from upstate say here eight nate from upstate with an eight. All right. That's a beautiful thing. Beautiful thing. Um, let's say when you make decisions in your relationship, cousin, let's say when you were 21, right? Have you dealt with anything or in your teens, have you dealt with any relationships where that was in your relationship where they always find something wrong with you? I mean, you said my 20s. Hell, they try to do that at 50 and 40. But see, I was going to get to that, cousin. I ain't even get a chance to ask you that. See, yeah, I get five well, minutes. Five minutes, please. I can't give you five minutes. I mean, people going to find fault wherever you, you're too pretty, too ugly, too fat, too short. Your breasts think your teeth crooked. <laughs> you know, it's always something new because either it's a reflection of themselves or they really just don't like you and they're just in a relationship. People be in a relationship and don't actually love or like a person. They just there for some type of convenience. So don't ever right. get it twisted because somebody said, oh, well, I'm married. Mm, okay. But how good right. is your relationship? Right. How happy are you? Most of the married people I know are miserable. Miserable. Especially these days. Shouts out the cover girl. Folk. I'm talking about people over 40 and some over 50. 
I don't know too many happy marriages. And that's unfortunate because marriage is supposed to be a beautiful, happy thing. Mm -hmm. When done mm -hmm. right with the right people, it is. Absolutely. Shouts out to Cover Girl One Four said mm -hmm. Amen. Um, and she said hello everyone. And Nate from Upstate said, "In today's world, a little faith will get you far." That's true. That's very true, Nate. But today's relationship will get you hurt too. Uh, we got Dougie in the building said coming to the stage That's and okay. um, but here's one thing and with me saying that with what I just said I do not want y'all going into a relationship with fear. That's no, never healthy You don't want to go and be in a, a fear a fearful relationship because you can never flourish being in fear um, You want to read miss Marla cousin? True to that, even younger marriages are miserable as well. They are. Um, and then on the flip side, I'm going to add one. People think marrying the same sex is better than marrying. They might have been in um, opposite sex relationships. Then they move to same sex. And sometimes they discover all relationships are the same. No matter what side you know, you're playing on or marrying. There's relationship issues on both sides. Very true. But but you know what? When I find, and this is no lie, I always say this. When I find someone going to the same sex relationship, especially women, it'd be, it be heck to pay. Because they think they're going, they're thinking that they're going in with another human that understands them because they are of the same sex. They can understand, no, a lot of times it's worse. It becomes abusive mentally, physically, emotionally. I mean, it becomes all of that. And then if you have one, the finances, just like we were just talking about. So that's not that's not the key all the time. I mean, you do what you do. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So. Um, Wait a minute. Uh... Go back. And then cover that girl, cover girl 14 said, hope is a very dangerous place. Um, they said, if you put it into the wrong thing, Darren says only here in the United States, us right at, I guess, um, Nate. So Darren, you said only here in the United States. I don't know if I want to be good or if I want to jump it off. I, I get you, you, you trying to say something else and you may read a little bit, but we always keep comparing outside of the United States. Let's talk about here. Let's talk about where you at because you're not outside the States. Let's talk about here. We keep popping to these other countries. Let's talk about here. Let's get here right before we talk about going to make another country miserable. Why you got to make the, cousin, uh, the country miserable, cuz? Or some days it's misery on here. Go ahead. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right, cousin. Um, my my whole thing about that though, you know, I agree also with Cover Girl, and I agree with Nate from Upstate on their comments as well. Uh, and thank you guys for your uh, participation. Um, during the level up, Coach says, "Sweet Mama G, that's just the reality." So who reality? Have you ever known people from foreign countries? Have you went to live? Have you gone to live over there? Visit anything? There are challenges and people all over the world. <laughs> they have the same type of financial situation. They have um, mental abuse, physical abuse. It, it doesn't matter where you are. That's a universal place. And you keep saying that's, you know, that have you traveled those countries? Have you met those people? Do you have those type of friends? Just asking, inquiring minds want to know. And okay. Douglas said, How many countries have you traveled, Darren? Mr. Miggy said, Darren, have you lived anywhere besides living here in the Lou with your foolishness in the United States? I added that part, but yeah. Answer that, Darren. Um, okay. And um, those are good questions. 
Mm-hmm. So let's go to the next one. Now, that first mm-hmm. one that we just covered was your significant other always finds something wrong with you. You said that that's a toxic thing. Let me let me ask you the other thing about that, because what, what I was going to say. Now, um, when you were in your 20s, have you experienced that? Child, you wouldn't even remember that that far. <laughs> A half a oh, I forgot. Half, half a hundred. Sure, I can't remember right. what I ate yesterday. You talking about? Yeah, okay. I mean, yeah, I've had. I was married then. I wasn't out here in the world in these streets. I was married. Yeah, fine, fault, and everything. That's an insecurity on that other person's problem. Okay, so with that being said, you dealt with it in your twenties, thirties, mm, and thirties, and forties, and now I'm a whole century. Beep, beep, beep. 20s and 30s. No, okay. Sir. So, so you don't tolerate it now. Sure, I can't tolerate too much. No, absolutely not. And that, that's what that's what I was going to ask you. So, you answered my takes question. Tough skin, perseverance, and self love to deal with these folk out here nowadays because you're not going to love me as a fluffy and want to deflate me to a skinny. That's not if I want to do that, fine, but. I'm so old now. I know who I am, and I don't need no assistance in creating all of this. Yeah, I got a comment about that real quick. Uh, quick uh, yeah, you can go ahead. Yeah, Miss Christina. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, the comment I got real quick about that, I think if the world would change if men had the same standards that women have. And the reason what I'm saying about that is I was arguing with one of my uh, power hosts. Mm-hmm. about this last night and she was like what do you mean by that though it's like a whole novel of things a man has to do to date a woman a woman and the reason why it's like that is because women have options you could be a, a two because of uh so many guys in your inbox and that basically want to see you at 3 a.m meaning like the only thing that's open around 3 a.m white castle waffle house and legs and so they blowing your inbox up to that point, giving you confidence to the point where you can go to any man, do you think all men want you in some type of way where you can say no to men so much because men are very impulsive. And so they don't think like how women is. Women are very conservative about a lot of things. So that way, that's why, if anything, it's like a scarcity. People tend to stock up on things that's a scarcity because you don't know if you're going to ever have it again. And sex, a lot of men treat sex like it's a scarcity right there. And that's why women have that kind of control. So if a man be able to go to a woman right now, a woman can like basically like meet a guy within the first week and ask him for $500. And the man can go right behind her, like, okay, cool, I'll give you $500. I need some sex bonds. She's like, oh, I got to have sex with you first before I can even do X, Y, Z. So if, if, if the role is reversed, if a woman goes to a man and asks him for sex and he says, hey, I need $500 for a PS5, you know, something of the more merchandise value. Right. She would look at him like, oh, you trying to finesse me, yada, yada, yada. But that's just so like how men put like kind of females on this type of pedestal. And there's nothing wrong with that because that's what everybody is taught. That's the checks and balances of the world. That women are supposed to be delicate and uh, maidens and all this type of stuff like that. And if a man won her, it's like he has to play musical chairs with the rest of the world and be the last one, you know, sitting in that chair basically get her basically but women don't have to put much effort in long she keep her hygiene straight she has a, a beautiful smile and she has a nice body that's what that will be enough for a man uh, everything else will kind of figure itself out basically right no i'm with you 100 brother and that is going to change you got so many simps and betas out here that's willing to do all that stupid stuff it is backfiring on the culture uh, uh, of the way women doing things because there's a lot enough information out there right now that can encourage some of these young guys to be better men and to handle the way they're dealing with women better don't go out there and just be giving your money away money too hard to come by these days don't be going out there just whistling in their ear and all this stuff no be a man from the beginning be ahead don't go out there uh, uh, singing sweet nothings to their ears just so you can get in their pants. It's ridiculous. And y'all messing it up for real men. 
Just like y'all women messing it up for real women. It's because they're raised by their their mother and not their father. I'm not Absolutely. saying black black women or any women in general can't raise a man. It's mass it's masculinity that you that you depress from a man basically. You teach them feminine ways. You know, when women be saying stuff about they five, six years old, oh, let them get in the kitchen kitchen and cook. There's nothing wrong with that. That's a form of showing feminism. Instead of him out there learning some manly stuff, maybe learn how to mow the grass, playing right. football, stuff like that, that would help him teach certain things about him, about pride and everything like that. They try to justify a lot of feminine ways and then end up, a lot of things end up, you know, progressing from that. And then a lot of men lose a lot, a lot of social skills and stuff that they should already be installed because they don't have a positive male role model in their life. Absolutely. I agree with that. That uh, male role model, manly role model, is so important to a young man, especially these days. And that's why we have so many different young men the way they are, because a lot of times the mom is the one that's bringing them up. We have Nate from Upstate said, if they are extremely codependent, they are toxic. Yep. Toxicity grows when they are codependent. Uh, Miss Christina, yes. with your man, do you cook? Do you cook for your man? Yeah. I love How many days a week? Probably like every day. And you don't have a problem with that? No. Who showed you how to be a woman? My mom and my grandma. Okay. All right. Respect. I mean, that's how it's supposed to go. And you have you have some out here that would still be brought up and be shown a woman, but then they don't act like a woman. They start watching the music videos and all this, what they see on social media, and they let that take over. And it's a mess. But anyway, um, you want to read this one, Cuzzy? It's not about the power in the real relationships, about working together towards a common goal. Now, that sounds good. But see, here's the problem. When you reach out to start saying, okay, I'm the head in here. She's not going to look at you like she's going to be like, no, you're a partner. You come in as the head. Show her headship. Mm-hmm. Show me headship. Your headship means two different things. You got two different definition of headship. I don't like your attitude. <laughs> That's, because, That's because a lot of the grandmas are now 35 and 40. Right. <laughs> so they twerking and they doing all this extra stuff instead of established uh, values into women out there. If you go back to the 90s and the 80s, you had a big mama. Right. <laughs> you just, that, and big mama shows you how to cook. She shows you everything about how to support your family how to discipline your children. You know what I mean? The poor hey, of, of nurturing. But nowadays, the women are 35 or 40. That's the new grandma. She's over there getting the DV. Let me be yelled on. Right. And she's telling you how to finesse the guy for a check. Right. And so when you look at it as a more of a culture base, other culture bases, the female, like the, the mother or the motherly role in the uh, household, they teach the daughters young how to be domestic, and submissiveness in our culture a lot of women don't understand submissiveness and domesticness they use it as a form of weakness in their eyes they want to be too independent and self-efficient instead of being, and then saying the same word time i want to be a team player it's that saying they always saying too many chefs in the kitchen if you're going to go to a man you have to trust that man to lead if you don't trust him to lead why are you dealing with that man in any type of capacity <laughs> Right. He's not the man for you. Sometimes some men can be too much of a man for certain some women. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Some a lot of women can't handle a man these days. You see what I'm saying? And it was something that you said. Um, I forgot what you you just said something that I was going to comment on, which was very right. Um, we have Miss Amelia say she cook every day. That That's good. I mean, a lot of these women. Why y'all think uh, microwave meals are so popular these days? <laughs> you, we're not <laughs> supposed to eat that, uh, especially every day. Supposed to cook. Y'all got to show these young men 
what women look like. But then again, Creed, they also got to cook healthy meals too. A lot of people are, ain't talking about that. I do love fried chicken though, but as you get older, man, that stuff will catch up with you. Oh yeah, to catch up with you. It's not teaching cooking healthy meals too. Right. Um, Hill said, Petty Officer said, that's for a beta. Alpha, it's his way or no way. Only beta compromise. Exactly. And that's what y'all running into. A whole bunch of beta dudes. And y'all got to stop mixing them up with men. There's real men out here. But a lot of men are tired. And y'all got to, y'all going to have to do better. A lot of these men got to do better. It's, it's, it's time to transform from beta to alpha. Hmm. It, I mean, you got to do it. We have Yummy Gummy said, I clean. That's a wonderful, wonderful thing right there. If you a woman that cleans, you get mad points for that. Also, uh, Yummy Gummy said, I take care of my man properly to his standards. That's another big plus. Mm -hmm. A lot of women can't say that. It always has to be compromise. <laughs> Every man don't want to compromise. Hold on one second. Thank you for calling. I'm sorry. Thank you for calling Conversation and Creep with Sweet Mama G. Who are we speaking with? This is Hill. Okay, what's going on, Hill? How hey, are you? Hill. Yeah, all right, all right, all right. What I what I what I'm really meaning is a lot of females want alpha males with beta waves. It don't work like that. Right. Alpha, there's always gonna be an alpha. You're gonna be part of the pack. It's gonna be his way or no way. A lot of them want alpha males. What you really should be getting is a beta. Exactly. That's, so that's why you need beta males out there. You're going to have beta males. He's still a man. But at the same time, he's willing to negotiate with you on certain stuff. Alphas, they're not going to do that. That's just strictly their way. Right. And that's why a lot of women, I don't mean a lot of women like that, but a lot, a lot of women going at them alpha males and thinking he's going to adjust to their way and it never works out. Right. Right. Um, shouts out to Dexter Harmon. Uh, it'd be better if you come over to um, YouTube. Yeah, YouTube. And you can really get into the show and you can comment on the show. And that's what uh, Dexter and my my brother George Roycroft. What's going on, brother? If y'all can come over to YouTube at Street Tactics Radio. That's where we are live and you'll get a better experience. Okay, uh, shouts out to DJ XL. I ain't even, I did hear y'all say that. Uh, what's going on, brother? He said, I'm 100% man and understand compromise is a man's treat. <laughs> we have um, Fishbone said, that's because women hang on to men for better option of a man come along. And, well, and probably until another man comes along, they will hold out from being lonely. Hmm. And that's right. Is, is 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 that not wrong? I mean, is that not right? Because don't know. Okay. Gotta ask the women in the audience. Make sure you continue to like and share the podcast. Also, please continue to drop your mental health numbers from one through five. Five being your best, down to one where you need self care and support. Make sure you continue to share. Also, hit the notification button so when we come on with the different shows on different days. You will know when we popping on and getting it started. Thank you, cousin. Well mm -hmm. said. Mm -hmm. You control them, telling them people. Yeah, I'm, I'm a narcissist. <laughs> you, you narcissistic. You, I sure am. Cousin sister. Oh, yeah, cousin mm -hmm. sister. Uh, anyway, uh, Fishbone said we need beta males to clear the field for better options to stick out. Um, Miss yeah. Christina said she'll be right back. So then I guess it's fishbone. Um, we need the beta males to take the ladies alpha males do not want. We don't have time for foolishness. And then. Oh, a uh, 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 alpha male not going to fool around. He's going to tell you right. what it is. And either you can ride. Uh, oh, okay. Cause. Five seconds. Bro. I'm gonna, I'm gonna always. Five seconds down. We're going to let it marinate. <laughs> so then Nate says the more of the story. Be careful with the one you share your energy. 
And then Yummy Gummy said, you got that right man want to get 50% while the women give 100%. How y'all feel about it's that? A, it's about time. Because I, men... I get the rest of it out, Creek. Good, 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 mocha. Go ahead. Five seconds. Now you can go, Creek. Goodness gracious. One. Yep. Two. All right. Two. That's that nonsense. Okay. To respond to that. Say, you got you got that right, men want to uh give 50% while women give 100%. Do y'all know how many years y'all women been bashing men and making men feel you know unwanted? Even even like right now. And this is nothing towards tall men, short men, medium-sized men, whatever. He got to be tall. He got to be 6 foot. What is him being 6 foot going to do for you, your bills, your kids and everything? See, what it used to be the old adage, I'm going to tell you where it came from. Mm -hmm. So women used to tell their daughters, get a tall man so your children have height. Can I tell a personal story, um, Creek? Sure. How tall are you? I'm 5'3". No, you're not. No, seriously. 6'1", 6'6". No, I'm just at 6 foot. Okay. Now, it, it, it's it's 5'12", uh, but... There's no such thing. <laughs> oh, Lord. Can we get a straight okay. answer? Goodness. Mm -hmm. All right. But your dad was how tall? Uh-huh. How tall was your dad? My father was, uh, my father was, he was five about like eight. five. No, nah, he was probably about like five, eight. Really? Yeah. Uncle did not look that tall. I'm trying to tell you. Yeah, he was about five, eight. <laughs> but yeah, our grandmother, four. Creed and I are biological cousins. Our grandmother was four feet ten. Wow. So that's why they said get a tall man so your kids will be tall. That was old adage. Don't get your short man. But you had some people, the kids still outgrow the parents. It's but it's old wives' tale, they say. That's all that is. Okay. And I think also being tall make you have big feet. So big yeah, well, feet so be great to your penis. And some people you may have a big penis and still don't know how to use it. And the big feet, you need to big feet yourself to work somewhere. Yeah, well, those are old myths. And yeah. sometimes you have women that actually get with a guy because of some of those reasons and Absolutely. be highly disappointed. Have that ever happened to you, cousin? Disappointed. Disappointed. God, hey! You got that right. Has that ever happened to you? Oh, absolutely. Right. Absolutely. You, you you got a story to tell or no? I know. It ain't late enough to tell that story. Okay. I'm going right. to get put off the channel. Uh, yeah. So real right tall here. man, real, mm -hmm. um, you know, or they want you to have real slim men. You know, that doesn't make a difference. A person is a person. Okay, that and that's true. That's true. Um, now let me say this. I'm gonna go back to you. Got the right men. You got that right. <laughs> men want to give fifty percent while the women gives one hundred percent. Now. I forgot the brother's name on the phone. Is Darren and uh, y'all still on the phone? I'm there. I'm sure. And what, yeah, what's, yeah. What, what was the other brother name with, with the podcast? Uh, Jody. Jo yeah, he was the voice on the podcast. And saying, well, is he, is he yeah, still? He, uh, he, he had to get off. Okay. All right. So, Hill. Hill, you there? All right. So. Uh oh, I'm by myself. Okay. All right. So, Darren. This I'm sorry about that. <laughs> oh, okay. Hold, hold on, Miss Marvel. Now, okay, now um, let me ask you this. And I and I want I want you guys, the guys that are in the comment section as well. The guys that are in the hold on one second. Thank you for calling Conversations in Crete. Who are we speaking with? Hey, I'm, this, this Hill, I'm back. Okay, I'm all back. right. Cool. Now, Hill, I'm, I'm a, I was going to ask Darren first, but I'm going to ask you first. Here's a comment, right? It says, uh -huh. you got that right. Men want to give 50% while the women gives 100%. What, 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 what would you have to say to that? What would I have to say to that? Yes. To be honest, I just put it in the chat, but we have to ask ourselves, who raised it? Who, who, who raised, raised it? Who raised the men, or yeah, who who raised the man? And mostly the woman. Th that's true. The household, they raise the man. You want all the praise when the kid does good, but you blame the dad. Mm hmm. 
when he ain't really paying uh, up to what you the standards that everybody think he should be up. Right. So, but I, I I also think that Yummy Gummy is saying that okay, men want to give fifty percent while the women give one hundred percent to a to a, a, a to, to the relationship. They want they saying that men want to give 50 percent and women want to give not necessarily money wise, taking care of the house, but to the relationship. How do you feel about that this day in town? Um, I mean, uh, I can't I can't speak for every man, but I, I can speak for myself. And that, that never been I've always been 100 percent. of. OK. All right. So. So, Darren, wh- what do you have to say about that? I agree with you and stuff. Um, it depends on uh, how they've been raised, you know, like um, the type of guy they're dealing with and stuff. If the woman from, like, see, the, the thing is, I, I'm thinking maybe it might be certain type of women that, like, uh, if she feel like that she above the man on the financial, you know, the boss babe and all that stuff. Uh, of course, she wants. She got to do more because the guy that she really wants really don't want her. They don't want no master woman. I'm just speaking on that level, though. But when it comes to like a regular chick who does that, have that, you know, uh, like some of the women who live in probably always going to have a guy where they can choose. If they still stay in the poverty in their relationship, you just going to be a guy that's, that's beneath her. But she feel like that she's doing everything. But she, I mean, there are all solutions that you can better yourself so you can attract a better mate. At the end of the day, now, I don't want to put in the work. I, I'm gonna say this. I'm actually, I'm actually asking y'all the question wrong. I'm gonna re ask it in a little bit, but I think w- w- what y'all are saying, I agree with what you guys are saying. But see, do, I can do put man put fifty percent into a relationship. Uh, he, I mean, nowadays probably with the the generation that's here now. Right. Yes, probably. Okay, what? Well, so and, and the reason my reason for that is you got distractions. True. And what, I can't say a woman always put a hundred percent in either. Right. There are certain well, but na- there ain't many that both na- sides do fifty fifty. Give us two distractions that you may be talk thinking of. Attention from the opposite sex, mm-hmm. social media, mm-hmm. and listening listening to friends. Okay. So Here's my thing. I am asking that question wrong, and I, I'll get back to y'all on that. But um, I'm, I'm gonna tell y'all right now, and I'm gonna tell y'all from my view. Men have been getting a bad end of the stick for so long that they are not putting a hundred percent investment into a lot of these relationships. It could be from a past relationship that made them like that, but sometimes. What I say about time, time heals. Give that man, show him something. Don't be uh, 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 a woman just to achieve something. Be a woman all day long. Don't don't do it for a certain thing. Just be you. If it if it if you can't deal with the situation, I'm sure the man will understand. Um. Sometimes it has to be Aaron too, like where would a woman, you know, do for that man and the man uses that to just give it to her so easily she's not gonna appreciate it. If he, if, if a man give a woman things, whether it's materialistic things or or whatever, the time and energy, it has to be earned. You know what I'm saying? If I'm a busy man, if I'm working on the business of my purpose, whatever, you want me to stop doing stuff and so I can focus on you. I, of course, I want my respect. I want to get him like a, like a woman, you know, like a lady, respectful lady. You know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, I, I, I agree with that. I agree. Uh, what what were you going to say, Cut? Go ahead, Hill. As far as that 50%, then the way you explained it like that, then yes. Because everybody that you deal with in life is an investment. So, so you that being no, I, I want to. If I'm giving you 100, percent I want 100 percent return on my investment. Right. So, so if a woman, so but you saying at first you're not going to give 100. percent I always give 100, percent but when I find out I'm not getting 100 percent back in the return, 
Yeah, don't mm-hmm. cut that back. Okay. No, I respect all of y'all because yeah. it's, it, it, I respect all of y'all comments because it's, like I said, I'm asking the question wrong, but you guys are giving me the right answers. But if I ask it in the way that I want to ask it, then y'all understand. You see what I'm saying? But I'll, um, but we, we're going to leave right. it at that. Um, we have uh, Fishbone say single mothers ain't raising these boys. Social media is teaching them now. That's true. Even like these twerking chicks. Uh, Fishbone also said, Creep marriage is really for women. Men do not benefit from marriage. Women want yeah. marriage more than men. We do not care uh, about, we don't care about marriage like that. Let me say this. Fishbone just said what I was talking about. Marriage has been messed up. Mar- I was married for 30 years. Let me tell y'all something. After all of that time and what you go through is hell. But I, I always try to keep a positive mind about my experiences. I will rather bring out the positive experiences than the negative. Especially looking at getting married today and what I see is going on. All these, most of these women be wanting severance packages. And, you know, they think they're supposed to get money. When they leave. And y'all men got to watch out. And I'm going to tell y'all why. When you get married, you know, when y'all hear me talk about marriage, I always talk about the traditional way. How it's supposed to go. But y'all got to remember, we have court systems now. We have um, um, women's rights and all this other stuff being put. And they, they're in the courts like the Klan. Right. So what happens is when you're in a marriage and then when you um, let's say if you're getting a divorce. Right. This is where y'all got to watch out at. Like I said, with me, I'm an old fashioned, traditional guy, when, especially when it comes to marriage. I wanted to be the head. Well, I was the head of my family. I, I, <laughs> I didn't want my um, my my wife to work. I wanted her to be a woman and do what she had to do in the home. That's because that's the way I was brought up. But you know where that backfires at on y'all? And I want y'all men to listen. When you try to have a traditional marriage, whereas though you're working, she's not, and y'all adding on kids and kids and kids, guess what? When you go to court, hopefully you never had to do that. But when you go to court, what happens is they're going to handle your case traditionally. They're going to look at you and say, okay, you was working, she wasn't. The court system works for the traditional marriage and it works for the women. That's why it works for the women, because she most likely wasn't working. If you want to get married, make sure she worked. Make sure she do the equal thing. And I know I sound like I'm I'm moonwalking and turning yeah, back. Because usually what I said. Don't work. You don't work. Yeah, but but guess what? We talking about the court system now. We ain't talking about what I want and what I did. The court system is going to tear you up as soon as you try to do the right thing. All you're doing is the right thing. You're doing the right thing and being a, a, a man and, and raising your family traditionally, but they're going to eat you up in court because you did the right thing, which is raises your, raise, you know, took care of your wife, took care of your kids traditionally. And that's how they're going to judge your case traditionally. Yes, they're going to they're bust your tail just because you was being a man and doing a traditional thing. But if she, if she was working... And if you pay yourself, if you pay, put your, your check in a trust fund and pay yourself in your trust fund, she ain't gonna be able to touch you. Nothing. She ain't gonna get nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As long as you have a trust. Like you heard about that soccer player that he was married, got oh, a yeah. divorce. He had a trust <laughs> and he had everything in his mother's name. That's so unfortunate yep. that we have to do that. So you don't think a woman should get 50 50 like. I mean, it was the it was the um, shoes on the other feet. Hell, niggity, no. Nah. Let me tell you why. Well, I mean, she. I mean, she was there for better, for worse. Who if cares? She, she Did she go and make the it's money like with him? Did okay. she go bust like a hustle with him? It's it's like a job. You get your severance package. Yeah. If I was, <laughs> if, if you was traditional, but if you work and I work, oh, you want to leave? Bye. Miss Amelia said she was married for 31 really years. You really don't want nothing to do with me. You really don't want nothing to do with me. Period. Why would you want my money? Right. Exactly. It's all about money with a lot of women. And I mean, if you, 
I ain't saying every, but a lot of them is about money. Go ahead, Miss Marla. Oh, uh, I forgot <laughs> Oh my word. Uh, <laughs> anyway, but I mean, there's different ways. Do not get the state in your marriage, for one. As soon as you mm. sign those papers, you're done. Don't try to rely on a prenuptial ag- agreement because mm. you can get ate up with that too. Because what will happen is she can easily say, I signed it under duress. Now, and that's a whole nother court case that she might win. Don't do it. I mean, and I t- I'm, I'm telling you, I love a traditional marriage. I do. It's the mm. way it's supposed to go. But the court systems don't care about nothing, none of that stuff. They don't care about none of it. And it, it's just, it's horrible. If you get married, uh, better say you run around a five-year mark, seven-year mark, do you have a fucking marriage? You don't matter if you get a 10-year mark. If you get a 10-year mark, oh my God, I'm only going to tear you up. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm so sick of hearing so many um guys crying. Oh, my alimony did this to me or that, that, that. That's just so stupid. What are these courts? These courts care nothing about a man. So until things change around y'all, <coughs> why can't y'all get married? Um, you, uh, Nate from Upstate said big numbers. A good majority of uh, them crazy or toxic. Not all, but good majority choose wisely. Yes. Mm-mm. Fishbone said I was not going to put up with marrying American women. I went overseas and found a traditional woman with culture. I have many rights. I'm, I'm sorry. I had my rights and she have hers. If that's what it takes for you to do, brother, definitely do it. Fishbone. You ain't never been a dumb oh, dude. Yeah. You ain't never been a dummy. You know what I mean? He was always a, a smart, wise dude. Shouts out for that. I mean, you can find some good women here, but this place is so toxic and it is too much on television <laughs> and everything else. I wouldn't even trust it. That's why if, if you, man, don't, don't get me started because a lot of people oh, going to hate me, but I forgot. I don't care. Yeah. Miss Amelia said, definitely put your money in a trust. Um, <laughs> and, 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 uh, Nate from upstate said people, out here freestyling ain't got ain't got the emotions right you get uh what you put out male or female mm. true and uh dj excel said period and um i mean it's it, it's rough it's rough y'all and i you know i mean i i really don't want to go that far like that or whatever but i'm serious i see some messed up stuff uh, happening i just saw one where and this happens a lot, where a guy got put out of his own, his his wife secretly went and filed for divorce, and then called the police on him, and he got put out of his own house because that was of a black guy, right? Yes, you say I think I sent it to you. I think you sent it. Yeah, to you. yeah, I think that. Yeah, and, and that's terrible. Thanks to the law, the law ain't crap. Nobody ain't listening to nobody. I tell you what, if they start, even like child support, and y'all may have heard me say this quite a few times. You want to know how to calm down child child support? First of all, the system makes money off off of child support. That's why they're so quick to slap you on, right? But the way you can start, the way you can start uh, uh, counter counteracting some of this stuff, well, the law has to do it. But okay, when she want to take you to child support, let them start making her pay fifty percent of child support and you pay fifty percent, and make sure y'all split those days up three and a half days per week for both of y'all to seven days. I guarantee you it'll slow down. I bet I guarantee yeah, you a, a lot of these women. You, what'd you say? And for me personally, not like I said, I don't try to broadcast my birth business every week, but I wouldn't trust my baby daddy. You know, with my son personally, because it's like it's about speaking of child support, I was going to see you up one day. But hey, it's just like for uh instance with my son's father, you know, I've been waiting for um, married almost like a year or two now, but um, you know, I remember when I was on the other side when he was playing child support with his uh first baby mama, that you know he was saying you know he wished that you know when you want child support you would supply what you know receipts everything you do for the child, and I kind of disagree with that. I mean, wherever money you getting. You know, from the father or the mother, wherever the, the, the case is, you know, wherever the case is, must be, 
you know, I think you should, but at the same time, you know, if you want to do something for the child, just do it. It's like with my son, father, he haven't done anything for my son. I'm like, okay, you want me? It's like a prime example. Not like I said, I'm not trying to tell my business, but it's like a couple weeks ago, or maybe a month ago, that me and him was arguing about like, you know, you know, school's gonna start pretty soon. Here at St. Louis, I'm pretty sure they start everywhere, but they start August the twenty first. And I'm asking him, was like, dude, are you gonna send me any type of money for uh, my son T or Terrence, you wanna say? Um and he was like, well, just put me on child support. I'm like, dude, I'm not trying to put you on child support. But if you want me to put you on child support, I would. And sometimes some of y'all men will force our hands to put y'all on child support because y'all acting some a type of way. And then we, when we move on and when y'all move on, y'all want us to look like we stupid sometimes. Uh, uh, I'll... Huh? Well, I'm not putting them on. I mean, I try. I mean, I got it processed, but I'm like, dude, I, why? I need to beg you. I'm not gonna beg. You know, I'm trying not to. Put them on child support. But you know what? You though? Know, my thing is this: a lot of men get put on child support for the wrong reason. Like, I, I fall in that category. I stood with my son and everything. And uh, when, when they like started to see you doing good and doing well, especially when you have like another woman that actually looks after your know, kid's mom or whatever. Now here comes the child support. And now that I'm on child support or whatever, okay, cool. Take this money. I got a lawyer and fight. You know, I just spend more money. So I got the uh, moderation thing with the uh, modification. So it, the payments would be cut in half. Like, it's lower. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, yes, I do have a receipt book. I don't, I don't trust the system. I still have a receipt book. And now I got a thing that I do where I get her money directly to her and then I'd be nice. I said, okay, I'm going to give you this money for this one. And next month, I'm going to pay you in advance. So the third month or whatever, I ain't got to pay you nothing. And she'll write a, a letter or whatever and say that, hey, the third month, I ain't got to worry about nothing. And so and she but still has to be I ain't trying to cut you off there, but how much you get her every month? Yeah, I get her, I get her full 30 every month. Okay. Now, I'm not trying to work. My phone number here is a deal, though. But my son, I give my phone on, I give my son three days off the week, though. So I gotta yeah. spend money and take her in when he with me, and drive her back home to the uh, gas and all that stuff. But she not she got three kids, so she not even taking that money to go towards my son. She got a new phone by somebody else who was the man who's not even in the picture to taking that money to take her on new phone. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So well, hey, do what you want to do with that money. I'm doing what I do with my son. So if you scroll up or whatever, okay, now I can tell you the phone. Now I can try to get for a cut. So I mean, three kids shouldn't be living in a two bedroom apartment. Right. Well, I mean, that's my thing about child support. If I can say something about that real quick, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. just imagine that kid goes to college. You come out 22, 24. You actually put all that money away. You talking about 120, 200,000? That kid can go buy, buy a brand new car. They can pay for their college cash. They ain't got to be in a hole. If you actually put that money up, but you're going to have them same bills regardless. Well, you know, uh, 99% of the women not going to do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? The point nine, maybe, but they're going to just, it, it's, it, it, and DJ XL just put it here. He said, chicks think child support is her support. And basically that's what they, that's what they think. You know what I mean? And, and it's terrible. They need to start putting <laughs> both of the parents on child support, make them, Work it out together. Don't do one or no, no. You both of them. Fifty percent from each one of them. I guarantee you, they'll be more prone to try to work it out than to sit up there and be now. They, you know how much child support that system get abused? It's ridiculous. It gets abused all the time. Uh, Dougie, yeah. oh, go ahead. They cut out. They cut out government system, child support, and abortions. Y'all be more careful who you have a sex with unprotected. Oh yeah, everybody. Because yeah. uh, it ain't no gain into it. Dougie said, Ho- "Hold on, hold on one second. Hold on one second. Thank you for calling Conversations and Creep with Sweet Mama G." This live is hot tonight, baby. Huh? Hey, what's going on? This, this fishbone breaking through. What up, fishbone? What's going on, brother? 
man. Y'all, 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 y'all uh, struck the nerve with the, the with the court system and the child support because I got a story to share. Okay, we'll love to hear it. So, first story. Then we talk about the child support. So, my oldest son, by this lady, I won't say. Um, me and I had had a child together, and I was getting him four days, and she was getting him three days. Now, during that time, we had separated, but we was on good speaking terms. So one day, she told me, she said, well, you know what, I'm going to take you down for child support. So I said, okay, cool, because I was trying to give her 400 some dollars a month, every, but every month I couldn't give it to her because it was based on how I worked. Mm-hmm. So we talking every day. We talk every day. We talk every day. And we laughing, giggling. We're going out. You know, almost like how we started when dating that dating situation where we going out for food and lunch and all that. But we weren't we weren't together no more. Mm-hmm. So she told me this she said this particular day, Yeah, um, you know, I'm gonna take you down down to child support. So I said, Okay, cool. The same day that she told me, I got a letter in the mail the same day saying that I had to show up at for, for child support. So I'm scratching my head and I'm thinking to myself, mm-hmm. you know, for the past three, four months, we've been talking about everything, you know, we was cool and, and you just now telling me that, yeah, I'm thinking about taking you down for child support. And then the letter come in the same day that you tell me. So I felt like she was deceiving me and, 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 um, because we were talking and she, she could have just told me flat out, hey, you know, I, I went down a few weeks ago and took you down for child support. You should be getting a letter. No, she just told me, well, I'm, a, I'm thinking about taking you down for child support. And I was like, okay, I, I agree with you taking me down for child support. So we go down to the child support. I showed them receipts of stuff that I bought, this, that, and the third. So her argument was, uh, he's here with me you should be paying child support for some of the stuff, you know, at the time that he's over here because you don't pay for a daycare. I said, well, when I go to work and he's staying with me four days, my mother's watching her. That's my daycare. I'm not responsible for paying daycare for mm-hmm. three days that he do. So I get in the court and the, and the judge tells me, I right, never forget this female judge telling me, well, we don't care about what you did in the past. We're going to worry about what you're going to be doing right now. The only the only good thing about that was the four hundred some dollars that I was trying to give her every month. They cut it in half to like two sixty three. That's good because she called herself trying to take me down for child support because she wasn't working and trying to leech off of me. So she kind of hurt herself. So I've been paying the same fee until he turned eighteen. But that's the way she wanted it. That's how she got it. Secondly, I had a I was in a relationship with a, another girl and we was living in an efficiency apartment and we worked at Whole Food together. Mm-hmm. So what she did was she started cheating on me and I just asked her, hey, I need you to pack all your shit up and, and, and get up out of here by the time I come home in the morning. She ran down and got an ex parte and I had to go to court. I had to stay at my mother's house. I had to go to court for that. And although that the judge could not find any reason for them to give me a charge, Judge O'Malley told me in the court, just so I can make her feel comfortable, the least charge that I can give you is a stalking charge. So I got a stalking charge, and we lived in the same, the same, same efficiency, worked on the same job, and they said that I was stalking her, but we were together. And I said, well, how, how are you going to give me a stalking and we lived together in a one room apartment and we worked together. But that's what they gave me. And so that thing still that's been on my that's been on my record for almost I wanna say almost eighteen years. So every time they run a record, it doesn't say specifically that it's a stalking charge. It just shows up as a domestic violence. And, it, and you know, and it wasn't a domestic violence, but that's what they put down there. So I hate the whole court system. I hate when the female judge they just automatically decide that the woman is right and she got all the rights to do this, that, and the third. And 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 that's 
you know, it struck a nerve when you were talking about the court system and, and it, it's not set up for men. It's I not. don't know how it is, but I know back then, you know, they was railroad men. Still are. Big time. And, and the thing about that is that, and women wonder why we feel this way. God, <sighs> I mean, it's, it's, we go through a lot as men. We tired of hearing about how everything y'all going through all the time. We go through a lot of stuff. Y'all don't hear it because we men. Men don't talk that much, but y'all got to voice your opinion. He dirty, he this, he that. Yeah, they, they threw me and, you, and, and I'm a type of person, if I deal with you, I'm going to give you 100%. Right, but when you play out of pocket, I'm and and then the thing about me is, I will allow you to keep on playing your role until I get until I get tired, and then I let you know, hey, I've been knew you was doing this. I just let you get by. I'm just giving you a pass. Right, you ain't say with nothing. But but men think totally different than women. I don't. I tell my wife every day when she say I did something, she's mad at me, and I say, baby, I ain't wake up in the morning and just say. Today, I'm just going to just fuck up my wife's day. I don't wake up with that kind of, If I made a mistake and I did something to make you upset, I didn't do it on purpose. It's not my intention. Mm-hmm. I don't have that mindset to just, today, I'm just going to get on my wife's nerves. And I tell her that all the time. She said, well, you just, you just want to make it hard for me. I'm like, no, I'm not trying to make it hard. If you don't communicate to me in a manner that I can understand, you're going to get what you're going to get. Because if you walking around and you don't talk to me and I don't know that you're mad and I just know you got an attitude, but if you got an attitude, I'm like, oh, she ain't, she ain't feeling herself. I'm going to keep it moving. Right. So, yes. So if, you don't, if you don't communicate to me, then I that that channel of, you know, because women always wanna, want you to assume that you know what's going on with them and that you know why they mad right. without even communicating with you. They do malicious things like throw your plate of food on the table, or they, you know, and then I'd be like, what, what's, what's, what's up? What, what's, what's going on? Why are you carrying it like that? Now, nah, cousin, don't worry about it. I'm, I'm gonna ask my cousin, don't why worry. do women do that? You heard what he just said. I'm talking about like they put your plate on the table mad, they cook mad, you know, sometimes not all like women don't do it all the time, but when they do it, why? Tell me. Because they want you that you know to spark the conversation. If if she's acting mad, she wants you to say, "Baby, what's wrong? What's going on?" Because you, you ask automatically supposed to know what's going on with her. You supposed to know you did something wrong, or you forgot uh, an anniversary or birthday to take the trash out, to pet the dog. It could be for any reason. I'm a G. I am I am not supposed to know what's wrong with you if you don't communicate with me because I'm too busy spending most of my majority of my time out here in the street dealing with foolishness and trying not to bring my work home. So when I step in my front door and I ain't see you all day and you mad at me for something that I might have said or whatever, you know what I'm saying? That's not fair because I, I'm out here battling the world to save my family. And when I come in my door, I don't want my food to be slammed on the table and attitudes, this, that, and the third, to front me. Amen. Let me say this, Fishbone. Let me say this, Fishbone. You just now displayed, or you just now said exactly what I was saying, and I think it was Nate from Upstate. Mm -hmm. Emotionally available. You don't have time to be emotionally available. You're a working man. You come in the house. You don't have time for all this just foolishness. You see what I'm saying? So you you you're not you you, you know for, you were just saying what's wrong? Tell me the problem so I can help solve your problem or solve your problem. You don't have time to be, hit up in well um you got to make time marshmallows you got to make time for your relationship. No, no. A part of being in a relationship is caring no. for your significant other. And guess what? I can care in a different way. But Mama G, yes, sir. I don't have a problem with communicating. Uh, a lot, a, a lot of women wait till you leave and want to text you or call you and tell you when I was just there. That's the main thing I'd be having a problem with. We could have talked about that while I was at the house. We could have talked yes. about it 
right but there. Hell, some people happen. don't feel like they. Some people can't. Maybe she feel like you're not approachable in person. See, I was gonna say that, but Kit, let me ask you: Does Hill seem like he's approachable to you, Cousy? I, I mean, the social media Hill could be the difference between Hill at home. Right, right. It could be a difference, but because, as for now, yeah, as for you, now, just like you present a different way on social media than you present in real life. I present on me? Media. five seconds. I present differently than I present. <clears throat> you know, in real life. So I can't speak my, my, to that. This is, this, is, this is the thing. And my wife understands that. If you have an issue with me, you do not wait till I get to work and try to display and try to tell me that you had an issue with me before I left the house. Because it's not good for me because the type of work that I do I'm going to be puzzling. I'm going to be trying to figure out why she's mad at me, why, you know, just back and forth. And what's going to happen is I'm going to get so upset and so angry that I don't know what's going on. And it's going to bother me all day that my action is going to be taken out on the people that I'm supposed to be serving Work. and protecting. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have, when, I'm, when, I put the, when I put this vest on, this gun in this bag and stuff like that, I don't have time to be trying to think about problems that I got going on at home because it's a different it's a it's a different world when I leave out here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if yeah. and if I let what and if I let what what's going on in my house dictate what how I act out in the world, that's not good. Mm -hmm. Especially when you especially when 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 the state entrusts you to have a badge and a gun. You know what I'm saying? So she can't just be calling me and just telling me on my job, you know, well, you, you left out of here and you didn't kiss me or you didn't. Did, 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 did. It's not going to work. So if you need to address something, you either address it when I come home or before I go to work. But I don't have time. I don't have time to be caught lacking out in the street because I'm worrying about my wife being upset and this, that, and the mm -hmm. third. Amen. And I, and I agree. This is not Hill. This is Fishbone, right? Yeah. Okay, because I know Hill does a different job. So, and I agree with you, and I've done it, and I've been guilty of doing it, and I've been on the receiving end, so I get it because that plays in your mind. Or we need to talk when you get home. Tell me now, because damn, my mind all day wondering what you want to talk about when I get home. So I'm have a different mentality. Okay. I'm gonna have that shield up, like okay, what what stupid stuff you gonna talk about now? And it could be stuff that's minute, but then they make it seem so serious. Especially like you said, when you got a <laughs> job or anything. Like I tell my workers, whatever's wrong with you, leave it at the door. We have nothing to do with what's going on in your household unless it's gonna pose a danger to everybody else, you know, where we work at. Believe that. And I've what? been in domestic violence, so I said I left that at the door because you don't have time for that. Yeah, and, and one thing about me is if it, if if I know that she's really upset about something, mm -hmm. and she she and she calls me, and then we get to a point where she hanging up the phone and not answering my call after I'm calling her back. Guess what? I'm showing up in the village to my house, and we're gonna have this talk right then and there. I'm taking my squad car and everything. I'm pulling up because one thing you're not gonna do is disrespect me hang up the phone, and not answer my call because now you address me with something and now you don't want to talk about it. Right. See, and, and that's... Go, go ahead, Fishbone. Go ahead. Go ahead. Now, I was going to say, and that's the kind of stuff that I'm talking about. When you don't sink into playing that game with them, they're not going to like playing by themselves. Let me know what's going on now so we can resolve it and move on. Don't Wait play minute, games with me. I'm sorry, five seconds. So, Fishbone, are you the gentleman that went to the Sudan to get your wife? Yeah. Yeah. Now she's going to try. What's her name? That is, uh, hey, Fishbone, go ahead. No, I was just trying to remember because I'm watching the comments because we have a lot of people going on. It's a yeah. lot of men jumping. Okay. Fishbone, Fishbone. So now, I, 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 I know my cousin. I, go ahead, cousin. Uh, so, yeah. you went to the Sudan to get this woman. And she giving you the American standard of women foolishness. How you feel about that now? Dan, are you on the line? No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. Let's, let's, okay. let's back it up. It's, 
a woman from a woman from a foreign country have they have 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 a certain um, traditional or standard or how they deal with relationship when it comes towards men. They don't. My wife don't come out of place and out of you know all relationships. You're gonna have arguments. You know, it's, 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 every marriage you're gonna have some disagreement. Mm-hmm. See, the thing is, my wife had to learn these things about me. Like, if you're gonna be, if if you wait till I get to work to try to agitate me about something, we're gonna have a problem. But she understands where you know when you talk and you sit down and you have these discussions and say, hey. If you have any issues you need to address with me, you even wait till I get home or this, that, the third. We, you go through phases. You know what I'm saying? Now, the reason why I chose to go overseas and find a wife because I was looking for, um, I'm, I'm used to, see, my parents are still together and my grandparents, when they died, they were still together. We came from South Carolina, from Georgetown. So I'm looking for relationships similar to what I to to what I know traditional. I I was I, I was Those never raised in, in, I was never raised in a single home a single parent home or none of that situation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when I decided to go out and really wanted to settle down for marriage for, for you know to get married, most of the women here in America and I'm not gonna say all, but most of them they wanted. They was looking for a particular type of guy that I didn't, but I didn't fit that for what they wanted. Always what making men up. They what be trying the to guy? build a man. What was the guy, um, yeah. Fish Brown? What was the guy they were looking for that you weren't? Um, they were they they wanted that. Uh, they wanted that. Most of them wanted that drug type. Uh, just that and the third. Now Pookies. I. I, I I, I, I'm not that. I'm not that type of guy. I mean, I did stuff growing up in the village, mm-hmm. but I was definitely not. I was definitely not part of that world. My older brothers and all of them, they they lived that life. Mm-hmm. But I, like I said, I grew up in a household where, you know, if I came in here with some brand new tennis shoes and 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 I don't have a job, my parents gonna question, "Hey, where you get them shoes from? Where you get right. them gold teeth and gold tape?" I grew up totally different from. From the guys who I grew up in the village, so most of the girls in high school, they were they were looking for those type of type of guys that can buy them this and buy them that. And, and back in the day, you even had to have the big fat herring bones or, or or whatever type of you know necklace and the Charlie Rudo clothes and stuff like that. I never grew up like that, so they were looking for those type of street mentality type of guys. So even when I went into the in, into college, I still didn't fit the quote unquote standard of what they believe a man should be. So when I decided that I got to a certain age and went through the baby mama drama and dealing with great helping raising other women's kids that's not mine, I, I went through that beta male um, phase, mm-hmm. and then I just decided. There's going to be some things that I'm going to put up with, and there's going to be some things that I'm not going to put up with. I'm 51 years old. My wife is 35 now. I'm not going to. I'm not going to be wasting my time with no woman who's just looking for a come up. Because most of the time, when a woman is 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 trying to establish a relationship, she always got a card in her back pocket. Always. Hey, Amen. Yeah. And you know what? I was just talking about that fishbone. Women mean it. And what, and what be I having mean a by plan. that is, what I, what I mean by that is, all the guys that she knows that she talked to on the side that she claimed as friends, or I knew them from school, or this is a coworker, and the, the work dad, and all the, the work husband, and all that. They sitting on the sideline on that bench, watching everything that you do, and everything that you do wrong. He's taking a note so he don't make the same mistake. So when you fall off and she she sits you down on the bench and put him on the court, he ain't from he, he knows he knows the whole play. Right. All women have an extra guy. That one they, or two. Yep, they, they telling y'all business. That, they, that that they go to and they and he did this and he did that, this that, this, that. It don't always be they talking to their girlfriend. Because most of the time when a woman talks to another guy, she kinda likes him. 
because most women don't talk to no dude that they don't like. Oh, even, even if she, even if she putting them in the friend zone, most women is not going to deal with a dude that she don't really care for like that. Right, and they're not going to share that connection. Mm-hmm. Now we appreciate am I right that. Or am I wrong? No, nah, you you right, you right, and, and you you were saying a lot of things that I that I said, um, and that that's some real man stuff right there, and it, it just has to be understood. Ain't no like if y'all want this sweet guy, you know, that y'all hear in the R and B songs, that's called a beta man. That's a beta man, a simp. That's what y'all want. Keep listening to those songs and find that guy. It's plenty of them out there. Let's catch up with some yeah. of these uh, comments a little bit here, Cuzzy. Um, Dougie said, I wish I was married. And she secretly filed and they put me out of my house. I'm going to pepper spray her, the cops and the judge. God mm-hmm. dang, yeah. Dougie, come on now. Yeah. <laughs> Nate from Upstate said, male or female, you can't be with no one if you ain't right. Very mm-hmm. true. Miss Amelia said, uh, I think sometimes social service will put child support on the father in the mother, if the mother tries to get public assistance, it's not you're absolutely it is. It huh? Is. Yeah, I that's exactly what I think it is. It has to be, especially in the state of Maryland. You have to take the parent, the non custodial parent, up for child support if you want the child to get benefits. Now, the, the, the question is, number. yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. They'd be ready to take you through the ringer, and most of those females know this, they don't care, they just want to check. You know what I'm saying? Or Medicaid, even for Medicaid or food stamps. And that's crazy. What is the system doing? You know what I mean? Uh, Big Sis said it is for, for the women. Talking I'm not court. sure. That was uh, back when she came out the courts. Okay. Uh, yeah, the, the courts are for the women. Forced parenting should be a court situation, in my opinion. That was DJXL. Uh, very true. Uh, Big Sis said, doing all that bashing towards y'all's Baby mamas. <laughs> uh, I, big, I didn't, no, no, she she was I, talking about earlier. Yeah, this, this, this is me going back to some of the, the catch up on the uh, comments because now they getting crazy. Like I'm trying to catch up to them. Uh, big sis say, except I guess all the Fox fathers would be fake out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fake. Mm-hmm. Um, and then big sis said, Mister Fishbone, that's not true. I'm not sure what she was talking about on that. And Darren. Uh, can't get a gun permit now. Dang. Um, Dougie said, uh, y'all better get y'all pepper spray. <laughs> DJ Excel said, but that's compromise. Uh, talking to, uh, and oh, I hate when this happened. Hold on one second. Um, DJ Excel said, uh, he was talking to big sis. He said, uh, you're right. If that was a court situation back in the day, it would be a lot of these lames unborn. <laughs> uh, DJ XL said, Hill, are you an aggressive person? But then he changed it. It's the fishbone. Oh, he, he meant to say fishbone. He said, no, no, but yeah, he, he, he said he meant to say fishbone. And then um, uh, DJ XL said, I've had women who really have been afraid to speak their mind due to unspoken past issues. So he, I, I'm thinking he's talking about like if you're aggressive, then you just made yourself unapproachable mm-hmm. to the woman. That's what I think he's saying. Mm-hmm. And then um, DJ XL also said, "Now, boom, you saying that, but this is a woman you went to Sudan to meet." Um, I'm thinking he's talking <laughs> about something that you said uh, in reference to that. Yes, and I, I look. I'm trying to figure out why are y'all demonizing men for going someplace else to meet a woman. Some- see, the, see, the, see, see the problem is the problem is that people don't understand is this, you know. They, it, I'm not saying that the grass is greener on the other side for everybody. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, for me and most of the brothers who are struggling to try to find a relationship here, mm-hmm. and it didn't work out, we started to go abroad or, you know, expand our, our territory as looking, you know, looking at other race or whatever the case may be to find our happiness. Because if, if the black women don't really want us the way they want us, then why are we even wasting time and in investing in them? If Amen. 
if your mama ain't teach you how to be a woman, I don't have time to be trying to teach you how to be a woman. Right. See, the difference is with my wife is this. My wife is, is born and raised Muslim, traditional. Mm-hmm. They don't intermingle with men, none of that. They don't even want to be in the same room with men, period. My wife only talks to men because she has to work with them. Mm-hmm. But when we go out in the public or when she comes to the man's kid, she the woman's be in one area, men in another. And that's how my daughter is. My daughter don't even like to be in the presence of boys. And you that's how it's supposed to be. That's how it's supposed to be. But you know what? You try to tell a woman hear that. Oh, you're controlling. No, my wife will tell her. My wife will tell you this. My husband has his rights, and I have my right. I have rights over him. And he has right. rights over me. I have my right. I have rights over him. You got to turn something down, uh, XL. Yeah. So, so, um, XL say, oh, I'm going to read your comment and you right there. <laughs> what I'm saying is I'm not demonizing nobody for wanting to try to go across, go abroad to go meet a woman or whatever, you know what I mean? A life partner, however you want to look at it. What I'm saying is, is that me, you know, I'm real big on generalization. You know what I'm saying? Like when women be like, yo, men ain't this. And when we be like, women ain't this. It's, I mean, I, I applaud you for, you know, for saying not all, but some or a lot. I mean, however you want to put it. But when you sit there and you will sit and talk about how you leave out the house and she does this and she does like she'll call you and it'd be like last minute, why you ain't do this? Why you ain't do that? You know what I'm saying? Those are generalizations of not just, you know, that you, you, you went, you, you're saying that you met this woman. I understand you want to try different things, you know, figure out something new, you know what I mean? You know, maybe you you go find happiness. But when you have some other people who are like, well, yeah, I'm going to go across. I got to go out the country go find me a woman. You might go across the, across the street and find a good one. You know what I'm saying? Like, as a Muslim man, we don't date. We don't date in Islam. It's supposed to be I choose you. We're, we're married. You know what I mean? You follow me because I follow Allah. You know what I mean? But my key thing is, is like, when you got a lot of other generalizations of like, not saying you particularly, but when you talk about like, yo, these women here ain't this, these women ain't that, what are you looking for in these women that make you pick the same wrong ones? The same way that we got to figure out why we keep keep on picking the wrong ones. But you but know, you I'm know a, what? I'm a, very, I'm a very logical person. Yeah, check you know this what I mean? Traditional out. don't work no check more. Out. Check this out. Here's my thing. Um, well, one, when I said that, I wasn't necessarily talking about you when it came, when I said why it didn't, because it'd be the women, not at all the time. But you, uh, you did say that. And yes. that what sparked me to say that. But here's the thing that you have to understand, right? Most of these, all right, I'm, I'm going to make it plain and simple. Most of these women, are they have their ways, the way they are here in America. You go if if you go and and meet a woman out of the country and you like and let's say if if, if Fishbone took to the Sudanese culture before he even met his wife and he mm-hmm. liked it right okay he likes that culture and then he wants to marry a woman in that culture and then we have American women he's American he's been here all his life and he knows pretty much what's out here not saying that he's not going to meet a woman here that can fit whatever he's looking for but then he likes that culture and he can he can really because he knows that's how those people are right but guess what you have american women the way they are you bring that woman over here to you to the united states the united states is demonizing sometimes they'll make that woman not his wife i'm talking about in general there's a lot of times where women came over here and and became just as terrible as a lot of some of the women are over here yeah, so, and I said that before. That's when I like back when we had so a discussion when it was me, you and Darren. I was like, yo, you talking to, like not saying you particular, but when it's mm-hmm. like, all right, you go, let's say you go over to Africa. Mm-hmm. You go to Nigeria, Liberia, wherever you go, you meet a woman. Mm-hmm. Y'all ain't joined it over there. You get over here and it'd be like the Eddie Murphy thing. Eddie, I want half. Because in, 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 in the social media and the internet has made the world a different place. Mm-hmm. Cause like you go on these little chat lines online, you see more Guyanese, Nigerian, Liberian women on camps, and you see Americans. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like yo, when we generalize, we take a lo- we take away from a lot. Of- we take a lot away from us. 
Now, me being a person that I am, I'm a very commanding person. It will never be no thing where you look at me. I'm, I've never been no simp. I ain't never been no sucker. I, I love women and women love me. Plain and simple. You know what I'm saying? As I said in the chat, like, oh, you can, if you're over aggressive, yeah, I've been a, a bunch of women's work husband. And trust and believe, some of them, I could have did a whole lot more than just gave a hug to and took the lunch. What you, you talking about, I mean? <laughs> You know what I mean? And that's just because of who I am, my personality. And some dudes don't really have that. They need shiny things to dangle in front of the chick to get attention. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, if, if I'm going to a whole other country, and I'm going to be in a whole other country, I'm showing out. I'm like, I'm in, I'm in, I'm, I'm, I'm somewhere, I'm in South Africa somewhere. I'm going to Dubai. I meet these women over there. Man, me being a Muslim man, I'm going to be able to have certain rights that some other people won't have. But at the same time, it's like, these women over there see me, oh yeah, he got money. Let me go talk to him. Then they come to America and it's already been a scam. You got more foreigners in other countries that's running scams than you do people in America because some of them are really good at it. But my thing is, it's like, yo, the, bro, the like, thing is this. the thing is this. If you, if you gonna marry somebody outside of the country, you gotta be really, really ready and prepared for whatever that's gonna come down because you can get anything. I'm not saying that that everybody should go over there and get a passport. But if you see, the thing is, I was looking for a particular, once Once I started dating people here in this country, and I realized that I was getting the same thing, and I, or, or I was making bad choices, I already figured out what I didn't want. It was easier to find what I was looking for, and I just happened to find my wife in Sudan. And I can respect that. But, I respect that. Uh, but I was looking I was looking for a woman who knows her right, a woman that I don't have to tell her how to be a woman. I don't have to tell her that she needs to cover up. I don't have to tell her that she shouldn't be talking to men. This and this. I was looking I went looking for something particular that I wasn't that I couldn't find here. And that was just that was just my choice. No, I definitely dig it. Because of, but you know one of the biggest fallbacks to that is though, is that you kept on saying one key factor. You was trying to find something. When you go searching for it, you tend to find a lot of the wrong stuff. Trust me, it's a lot of people who went down uh, uh, Caroline Street and Pennsylvania Avenue that figured that out the hard way. They went searching for something and found something they they, they didn't like. When you go to searching for yeah, it, well, I was searching <laughs> for it and, and, and got children out of it and got two different baby mothers and it didn't work out. Mm -hmm. And I got looking for nerve in all the wrong places. You know what now, I'm saying? Right. Let, let me. I'm. I'm gonna do this, Miss Marlin. This. This is an old question. She said, "I have a question. Do you think the father should talk to his son every day?" Absolutely. He has to mimic the same way as if he was in that house. But it depends well, on if the father is somebody I, worthwhile to be uh, to, to be modeled behind. If the father ain't shit, why would you want your fa your child to be like the father? Let me. <laughs> let me ask well, you. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> Let me let me let me use myself as an example. Okay. Mm -hmm. So my oldest son, he's 23 now. This is the one I had to pay child support for. He spent most of his time with his mother. He made it hard for me to you know, with, when when he's doing good, they don't contact me. When he's doing something wrong or he's acting up in school, they call me and then I gotta come up there and play the, the father role and all that. And I've been trying to be a father all his life. I mean, you know, and 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 when you put me in a situation where you taking my my son over to different states all over the place and that, that the third, and then you wait till he gets to a certain age because when he was when he was about six or seven years old, my family pleaded with her, "Hey, let that boy come with his father." He wouldn't. She didn't want to let him come with me because. He saw the benefit of the child support. Feed up forward. Now that the boy graduated, he ain't doing nothing for himself because he was raised with he was raised by his mother and four older sisters. He's the youngest boy. He some he be telling and talking to me. I'd be like, I'd be like, man, you you talking like 
this is some some beauty shop shit. She, only girls gossip like this. I mean, like, like what are you like? You you doing too much talking? You sound kind of you know like females always yapping, yapping, yapping. Always got something to say. So my point is this. When you alienate the father from playing his role, even if you ain't in a relationship with him, you create a whole other situation between a father and a son. Because I sometimes I feel like my son, he he resent me because he feel like I was never really there. But it wasn't by it wasn't my choice to not be there. You know what I'm saying? And 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 and, and, by, and what I'm trying to say is. I always set up to the plate when even if I was in a relationship with with uh females that, that, that had children, I always stepped in that role as being a father. So it was nothing to me. So when you don't communicate with your son on a on a daily basis, this that and the third, it, be, it 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 becomes a problem. Like I, I like I don't haven't talked to my son in probably three months. He might text me here and there and, and get mad because I won't send him no money because I'm like, you're a grown man now. I, you know, why you ain't working? Why you doing foolishness? Just that and the third. But females always forget all the time that when we was in a relationship, I was helping you raise three girls before we even had them. Mm. You know? Right. And now that we now that the relationship is over, and you feel a little bitter or whatever the case may be, you use my son because you know that's my firstborn. That you, you use him to try to hurt me. And that's not fair. I love all the children that I have, and I only got two two boys. Mm. But I got a daughter who's 15 years old that I'm taking care of. She don't even know who her biological father is, right? Mm-hmm. When I met her mother, she was already pregnant with that one. When I took my son... I took her too because mm-hmm. it didn't make sense for me to invest in this little girl and just take my baby boy who's autistic and just leave her with the mother. So when I left, I took her and my baby boy and they've been with me ever since. Man, uh, big, uh, that we commend you for that. Uh, because that, you know, that could have went, went really wrong. My daughter, 15 years old. I paid for her tuition. And everything that girl never met her real father. She know I'm a. She know I'm her. I'm not her real father. Right. But she accepted as her real daddy because she never met him. Right. And I knew when she was pregnant with him, and he was going to never take care of her. So I put my name on that birth certificate, and then I took care of that little girl. And then I had a boy after her by the same woman. Mm-hmm. These two kids live with me to this day. We wow. ain't, we we uh, we haven't seen their real mother in eight years. She wow. is right here in the city. Wow. So um, that just goes that just goes to show you that when, when a father is in that in that position to be around the children, they 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 they, they pick up certain things, they grow a certain way. So my son and my, my little son and daughter, they, they they used to growing in Islam and there's a particular way how we run our household and they don't go against that grain. But when you got a child that's raised by a single mother and she's telling him this and she's telling him that and she's this, this, this. You, I can't fix him at this age. You should have let me fix him when he was six years old. You should have sent him over here when I asked you to send him over here. Mm-hmm. Um, Not keep him because you're trying to get child support. Let, I'm, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this, though. Something that you just said. Um, a lot of women may not like this, but fathers usually end up being better parents T- uh, caretakers than than mothers, usually. Um, and we go yeah. we get ready to start wrapping it up, but I'm just going to sift down some of these comments. Um, uh, DJ XL said, "I hit mad chicks that went home to their husbands." Dang, uh, hold on, uh, XL. <laughs> 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 oh boy! Uh, he gonna make more females. Ah, ah. <laughs> this is what I be talking about. And then, uh, uh, big sis said, "Bird, I meant the child support is for women, not the courts. It's the courts that get paid off of child support as well, the state." Um, and yes, it's for the it, no, it's supposed to be for the kids. But I mean, I, I understand what you're saying, big sis. They, it's being all wrong. And uh, Dougie said, 
what's that sound? Somebody life support. Oh, he talking about uh, XL's. Uh, I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a um, mute you just for a second, XL. And if you got, if you want to say something, just hit unmute. Um. Okay. All right. Uh. So. Okay. Uh. We had. Okay. Well. Um. Then Big Sis all also said that um Fishbone, I see your wife is a lot younger than you. So truly understand what I truly understand what you did. She is just starting to smell the seasonings. I'm not sure what that means, Big Sis. She's, she's younger than him. She's in her 30s. She's just blooming into a woman. She's not an older woman. She's getting there. There's okay. an age difference. Okay. Well, usually it wasn't like he went to get a woman that's 50 the same age as him. He got a younger woman. Yeah, usually that that's how it goes. You know what I'm saying? Like men <clears throat> our age usually don't want women our age. Mhm. Mm and it's kind of kind of odd because like sometimes they want them younger, but sometimes they want them a little older. Mhm. Mm it's weird. Is they just don't want the woman their age. Well, my wife didn't. She didn't care about the age. I guess because well, that, like they said, used to that over there, right? Like it, it's it's usually exactly exactly. And, and what what happens is when you when you when you you when when you in a, 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 a in a um. Uh, uh, a household full of Muslims and they all and the, the sisters are raised by the mother and and they taught this from the time that they come out the womb. Mm -hmm. They automatically it, it's different. They raise different. It's just like it's, it's, it's you know it's, it's, when they get to a certain age, they don't have that intermingling with the boys and the men and the, and the third and stuff like that. They strictly raise at a certain at, when they get to a certain age. It's time for me to teach you how to be a woman. How to be a mother, how to be a good wife, because it's going to be that time you're going to have to leave and and and, and, and find your husband. So right. all this stuff starts very young. It is it, 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 pushed on them. You understand what I'm saying? Right. We're here, um, and I'm not going to say all females do it, but you know, a lot of women uh, set their daughters up to to. to to be looked and prayed on. Mm -hmm. What I mean by this is you will never catch my daughter intermingling with men or boys, mm -hmm. hanging around boys, the set and the third, and dress a certain way. My daughter and my wife wear what they call a body where they don't show their figures. Where you got these little girls looking like they got all these little these little dollar store spandex and, 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 and stuff like that, wearing tight clothes around curved men. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's just it's, a, it's just the children are raised different, and when they raise from from being young in an Islamic home, they take all that with them because they expect, you know, they expect their husband to already play his role because they're going to already play their role. And if you're not, and I suggest guys, I don't want guys to just decide to get a passport and say, "Hey, I'm gonna go to Sudan or whatever African country or whatever." and think they're going to run game on a family and think they're going to pull it off. It ain't going to work for you. Right. You'll just be wasting your time and you might as well just go ahead and stay in America if you ain't going to be serious about it because the family or the, the, the family um, the mentality is very strong in those Islamic countries when it comes to family. And it's just, it, you know, it, if a man thinks he's going to go over there and just sleep with a woman and come back, he can hang it up. He can hang it up. It ain't going to work like that because they don't fool around like that. Now, I'm not saying that there's no places where they have brothels, but typically when you marry somebody from an Islamic family, it's, it's just way different. My wife was a virgin before she met me. I'm the only man she ever been with. And she comes to America. She's been here almost six years and mm -hmm. don't intermingle with men. Mm -hmm. To this day, she don't even let, but she don't allow my daughter to intermingle with men. Nice. So, yeah, that's 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 the way it should be. 
You know what I mean? Uh, America just tears up a lot of different things for families and people in general. And that's why a lot of other countries really don't like America because they, they too loose with a lot of things. And, uh, my and one thing, big one sister, thing about my wife is this. Uh -huh. If she, if she mad with me in public, she would never address me openly in the public. She would right. never raise her voice or anything. And she has never raised her voice at me really since we've been married. She's always been very mild, but you know, when she gets upset, she gets upset, she shut down or she do, you know, you, you know, see what happened in things. Dubai. <laughs> Old girl tried to the fussy. She tried to raise her voice in Dubai, you know, cause a lot of us, We'll go over to the Bobby like, yeah, I'm flossing. Yeah, huh? you think you can do what you can do over in America, over in, in, in Dubai. Her butt got locked up. She got straight locked yeah. up for raising her voice because the women are not well, supposed to do that. Yeah, well, you know, if, if, if men is in my house, if, 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 men in the, if I have men in this house, my wife will come, make access. If you want, y'all want tea, y'all want anything, she come and serve us. And then she and my daughter, they go out of sight away from us men and mm -hmm. going about her business. Period. Cause you know, he, she don't don't interfere. She just do what she need to do. Make sure we all good. And then she leave and go on her on her way. Do you think you can do that, Cuzzy? I've done that. I don't sit yeah. around this to men. Men guys are like women. I don't want to hear what y'all talking about. No, but it is more than that. My wife don't even inter interfere with cutting into a conversation. When it's men around, he don't want to even be in the presence of men. Well, yeah, you, you keep your Sudanese woman, cause I'm being around some men. Thank you. She just contradicted herself. No, I'm talking about right now. I'm saying I can do that one day. You hear this? That's exactly why the I brothers is catching planes. Don't catch their asses. Catch them. Do what you need to do. Whatever you make, listen. I don't care. <clears throat> if you go across the world to find whoever you want to be with, that's your business. I could care less. That is nothing. Yes, y'all do. Me. Yes, y'all do. Because every time one of these guys say they're gonna go over there, y'all got so much to say. Let me say so you much to say. The men y'all talk you about going over there, they can take their ass over there. Darren can take his ass over there any day. I don't. We don't want to hear him come on the show. Wherever yet, go on over there. Whatever makes you happy. I'm all about happiness. And this point in life, if that's gonna make you happy. If I go over to Jamaica and meet Dexter, I go to Bahamas and meet St. Jack, whatever, that's my business too. So if yeah, I start yeah. doing, we don't right. care. We don't care. You're right. You're right. Yeah, so we don't we don't kidding. demonize y'all. We don't we don't do we don't demonize y'all nothing. Y'all no, videos no, 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 no. Like, oh, they're going over there, they're doing this. Listen, you know what? Those are serious. simps. Those are simps. We I mean, don't care if you go and do oh, whatever you want to do. Without, no, we don't. No, we don't. No, 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 no. Men don't care. Y'all go right ahead, slap back, slap cheeks with Dexter. I sure will. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you a Muslim husband so he can set set you straight. No, I'm good. She see. She my my first husband tried to be Muslim. He was he was a Muslim. You know what that is? A fucked up Muslim. I'm good. Look. That's is it. See, that, that's why, and that's exactly why. I don't need no hookups. Hold on, hey, hey, Chris Brown, Chris Brown, I got a question. When did you make your shahada? Who, who you said? Uh, right after the, I took my shahada right after the nine eleven incident. Okay. Now I'm just asking how long you've been Muslim. I made my shahada in 1992. I mean, I've made, I've, I haven't made my Hajj, but I've been out the country to multiple countries that are Muslim countries. It's not the women right. are bred to be housewives. They're bred to follow their husband. They're bred, they're taught to follow Islam. Um, saying right. like, they get, telling like getting a Muslim husband to set, it's not really going to be a thing where a Muslim husband is to correct the wife. They're still going to be in the terms that people would say of being a quote unquote simp, no, we still build a household because we build a family. So, um, yeah. even when people talk about we have Muslim men, they get four wives. No, we get four, we can have up to four wives as long as we can afford them, yeah, but we don't look at right. them as quote unquote. Simp families. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like, no. I've my when grandfather I, been Muslim I mean, since the 70s. When I made that comment, I was making that comment because 
the the the, the, the one of the ladies said something about they, they you know about options, and I was saying that that y'all really are options because we have a choice to pick. If we can afford to take care of one, two, three, four, that that's option for us. We have an option to choose. And that's what I was referring mm-hmm. to her statement. Uh, yeah, you know what? Well, everybody think, got options. For them. I think that, yeah, yeah. The women been action, exercising their options for the longest time and men just had to shut up. And that's why so many yeah. soft men are, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. No. So what, I'm saying, what, I, what, 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 what I'm saying is, is this. What I'm saying is, is this. Like I had a conversation with someone the other day. Relationships, I don't care how much the woman says she's going to keep that man, if she know how to keep him, that decision is up to him. Y'all, ain't, y'all, y'all gotta remember, we were put on here first. We are the heads. Mm. We were put here first, so y'all, y'all became helpmates. I don't care if none of y'all don't like what I'm talking about. I don't care. No, I, but I know I'm what it's supposed to be. Like all of us have options. Yeah, it's about yeah. who we all choose. Like I know I've had women that were great women who dressed modest, who were very intelligent, who went to school, got doc, got got degrees. But I also was hitting strippers and porn stars because that's who I chose. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Your personality, your charisma, your characteristics is what chooses your optional plans. If you like, if you yeah. can't have the 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 commanding personality to meet the woman that you want, most of these dudes are gonna do whatever they can. Like I said, to have something shiny to dangle in front of these chicks and say, "Hey, I got this car." Hey, I got this job. Hey, I got this money. And you're becoming a John. These chicks are pretty much prostitutes without being paid directly. It's prostitutes on credit. You ain't giving them the dough right away, but the dough is coming in the long run because your options is that you want to get, you want Nordstrom's product with Kmart money. You get a lot of that. Get put out. Yeah, you get a lot of that with uh, American women. And and some women from other countries. A lot of I mean, American women. Me, hold on, one of the people that's a part of this part, well, not really a part of the podcast, but always is in this podcast, said his wife was Jamaican. Mm-hmm. Right or wrong? But you know what? <laughs> I, I, I heard this from Jamaicans. They said that they'll never date a Jamaican woman. I don't know what you mean. I know a bunch of Jamaicans did this. Well, again, I, mean, I, don't, again, I don't care how mad... <laughs> None of these women get. I don't care. But here's the thing. I'm gonna tell you this. You know, concrete. Uh huh. The, the, the reason that some guys make this decision to go overseas or date white girls is that the third is because the fact that women put so much pressure on the men or with the, the type of guys that they like, and the guys that they talk about they like are not the guys that they ultimately choose. And then when they choose these bad ones, because First of all, we need to, you know, we, we have to understand the difference between loving someone and liking someone. You can like someone, but that's not, that don't mean that you love them. And we, 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 we you know, too many people like people and then be like, oh, I love him. No, you, you just like the things that he, you just love the things he do for you. But you, you, you know what I'm saying? We confuse right. like with love and, and, and consider that a relationship. Right. To really understand See, what love is, and too many people like people, but they don't really love them. Right, right, and and and, and, and that's and we base our relationship off of like. Right, that's true. Not love, that's, that's true. true. And love. we like black folks haven't experienced love and loving themselves since the sixties and seventies, even though it was so much uh, turmoil going on that we had to still. I wasn't born. I was born in the seventies, but I'm just saying. Even today, we go through a lot just being black, right? So it's bad enough when I'm getting back to my point. Like I said, I don't care what they say. Sometimes, a lot of guys get to the point they just want peace. Mm-hmm. And sometimes peace ain't where you're from. And so you have to go somewhere else to seek peace. Yeah, you're right. But you know, Creek... The problem that, that our society have is this: we, we men and women, and, and I'm gonna speak for myself as well. We we 
talk bad about each other to the point where we just tired of hearing the same thing. Mm-hmm. And we just decided, like, you know, when, when when you always tell somebody, men ain't no good, American men, that we don't, we hate, we hate these brothers from here, this, that, and the third. And, and when we genuinely trying to speak to a woman and we just say, you know, walk up to them, hey, good morning, how you doing? Uh, don't talk to me or you give them a snotty attitude. We get tired of it. And right. sometimes we don't even really be interested in trying to even get your number or nothing. We just being polite. Right. And we get we take we soak in all of that. So when you constantly say, Men ain't no good, men ain't no good, men ain't no good, guess what? The men that you claim is not no good, that are good, they're gonna go look they're gonna go look somewhere else. Elsewhere. Elsewhere. And then the funny they're thing gonna, uh, XL, I put you on mute just in case if you say something, make sure you hit the mute because it, it sounds like a like you know. But um, uh, but w- when you talk, it's okay. But just hit hit unmute so that that way you can uh, listen. It. Anyway, but yeah. So um, what what happens is unfortunately us as people of color, we've been through so much and we tend to have a more aggressive uh delivery and a lot of different things but even when it comes to our women yes our women been through a lot or whatever but sometimes our women can be unbearable unbearable i just i just the only thing i want to tell sisters is this if you come across a good brother that i mean he he he, he may not be the best he may not have the best job or whatever the case may be please don't take the anger of your past relationship and drop it on him. He didn't do it. Give the man a chance. Don't bring the burden of the hurt and pain that another man did to you because you made a poor choice mm-hmm. in a man. Put it on him. Right. He don't deserve it. Right. I mean, he he really we do it too. I mean, let's be logical. Yeah. We do it too because a lot of us are hurt. A lot of a lot of us did like we talk about mental illness every week, then. A lot of us been through a lot. Now, coming from a standpoint, like I, like I say, I talk to. I mean, I know a lot of women. If you, like you, like you say, when you speak to them and they, they turn their nose up at you. So what? Because yeah. I, I mean, because because I mean, really, we don't know how many times she came across somebody who, who might have been just trying to have sex. Who was hey, how you doing, sweetheart? Blah 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 blah. Your introduction is like pretty much is like okay, what are you bringing else to the table? Now, I understand we shouldn't have to do tap dance and jump through hoops to get attention, but at the same time, for every no, it's 10 yes. So that might not be the one for you, but it could be somebody walking right behind her that might be the most pleasant woman in the world, but you ignored her because the one that you met ahead of her. But see, you know what, though? Go ahead. This is what I really hate. What I hate is the fact that women make those experiences that they have with men Against other men, and I'm not saying, and I'm not saying men don't do it neither. I'm not. Saying we definitely that. do it. We do. Yeah, I'm not saying that. What What I'm saying is, mm-hmm. is that that sometimes women go a little overboard, and they when they get in these relationships, they the the, the old wound that they haven't healed from because they haven't take time to heal themselves. They jump into a relationship with another guy, and he gets it. Oh, he gets hit from the left, right, this, that, and the third. And the relationship becomes toxic. Yes. And it's, and, it's, and, 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 and it's vice versa. Men do the same thing. Vice versa. What are you talking about? <laughs> and then the next day, dating Nicole. God. <laughs> and they bring all the foolishness. They're not ready for a new relationship. It's okay to be single for a while. It's okay to get yourself together and do self-care. You know, people just feel like they always have to be in a relationship. They always have to be in a relationship, and you are still a whole person. You are still not in a relationship. What, what you kicking, what you speaking right there is the truth, and I just was talking about that as well. Some men, even myself, have to find myself after a long relationship. You have to learn yourself again. You have to learn how to be a man. Sometimes you need time to yourself. Work, support yourself, come home, meditate, be by yourself. Go freaking take walks in, in the wood, you know, hiking or whatever. I, you know, I bike or and whatever. Treat yourself. It's nothing yeah. wrong. All that stuff you're talking about buying women flowers. Treat yourself to something that you want. Right. You know, treat we yourself. always talk about you buying other people's stuff in a relationship. Treat yourself to whatever that you want. It's nothing wrong with being single until you feel like you're finding that one for you. 
Alone don't mean lonely. Nope. Let me let me, let me ask you this, Mama G. Uh -huh. How do you when, when you when you hear women say statements like, um, it's it's, it's too hard to you know men ain't no good men are dogs and this is why I'm you know this is why I'm starting to date the same sex. How do you feel when when women say that? Like like they, like the like the man did her so wrong that she decides she's gonna date she's gonna deal with the same sex as so a for, for over, so for over me, finding I have I have friends that transitioned over that side. Do whatever you want to do. You know, a lot of times they were doing it anyway, having threesomes and having sex with women anyway. It's just now they think that's gonna be something different. It's just like Okay, a new fad. Some people make it a fad. Some people make it a lifetime. It's all in what they want to do. Because personally, I'm not clocking nobody pussy miles. I'm trying to deal with my own. God, hey. you, know, you know, when they talk about that, you know, I'm of the 50 range as well. I could kill less of this point. Half, half, half. You know, I'm just, you know, just, trying to worry about me. Those conversations, I, I typically don't have those do girlfriends. One of my best girlfriends that we grew up together she transitioned, went over to the side. She'd be back and forth. She told me she was gay one month, and then she was pregnant two months later. And I was like, wait a minute. I had to get myself together to understand how that worked. She does both sides. She's attracted to both sides. It's just depending who is going to take care of her the best. Who's what you talking about, what you She liked what she liked. She did the threesome thing. She liked what she liked. She just a regular old... I know. I know. I know one thing for sure. I don't care how many women hurt me. Ain't no way in the world. I, I'd rather be by myself before I decide that I'm going to lay up with another man. Now, I don't, I, that, that's just not going to happen. Yeah, that's you just know? crazy. So when, I, when I hear women talk about that men treat them so bad that they got to turn to another woman for love and affection, I'm like, wait a minute. Well, yeah, they I think mean, women like, know them. They understand how women have the same feelings and emotions. So they want to get somebody that's quote unquote like mind or like spirited as women because they know the central parts of a woman. And maybe she's never had a man to touch those sensitive parts. Just because you with a man, you can be showing sure men for 20, 30, 40 years doesn't mean you fully know your complete sexuality. A lot of people have been um sexually stumped, meaning they could have been molested or abused in their past whatever happened to them. So they sexually, you know, stumped in a certain way. So they looking for that love no matter who it comes from. Now they want to try something so let me, different. Let me ask you this. So if women walking around talk about men as dog, I don't like men, then why do they go out and date studs? God, hey! So psychologically, I mean, I, from a counsel standpoint, I can't tell you personally because I like the slongity dong, dong dong all day. So I can't give you on a personal note. But for what you talking about? People want the perception. They don't want to be all the way called gay or LGBTQ plus, whatever. So they want to date somebody in the appearance of a man, but still have those central feelings of a woman. I know a lot of them want to have that on that line. All the time. I used to DJ down a bunch of years on Legacy night. So they may be studded out looking like Excel with the beards and took hormones and still like dick. You see the studs? I had no other beard. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> it's all in what people want, choose. They may be on the fence and it might be a self esteem issue. A lot of them may have self esteem. I've noticed that they are always the most attractive, some are attractive, whatever. It's all in how you feel about yourself, whether you're heterosexual, gay, lesbian, LG, non by no, whatever you want to be classified is, it's about the self-esteem and how you project your energy to somebody else. Okay. Well, I like men's. Oh. Sorry. That's good, Cuzzy. That's good to mm. hear for everybody to hear. Um, we Hello. appreciate you and we'll keep you in prayer. Always. That's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> Mm, that's what you're supposed to do. All right. So when I invite you to DJ the wedding, or when uh, somewhere, don't say nothing. You and XL gonna team up and do my wedding reception in uh, Morocco or somewhere. I'm going to Monaco. Get me a rich man. I wanted to do her stuff for my friend. 
and, and, and don't forget fishbone. I'm gonna be a witness to this. You're gonna be a witness, you're gonna be security. <laughs> uh Patty Yo, Officer. Patty said, Officer. I used to watch that all the time. Like I said, I used it's a club in Baltimore called Buns. It's a gay club. I used to DJ there on lesbian night. That used to be funny. You hmm. see one chick one week, they all booed up the next week. The, 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 the uh, Dom is there with another chick. Fight break out. I can, there's stories I can tell you about seeing that. That was hilarious. There's no difference. It's people's sexuality and how exactly. they play out. It doesn't matter. They're going right. to still, in their, in their new element, who they are, they're going to try to get as much pussy as they can, just like men. Just like if a woman been a certain way, she's going to go out. And break out and see how much dick she gonna get. It's no different. It's no different. It's funny. Yeah, I, 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 that place even so open? I don't, I don't go downtown like that. I live in the village, so. No, nah, it got shut down a while ago. You know, I mean, I stopped DJing there like 2016, 20, 2015, something like that. Maybe sooner, maybe later. I mean. Wow. Oh, okay. Because I remember it used to be by the post office. Right? Yeah, right there where the post office is. So me and Dougie get married. Told y'all. Yeah, my oh, right. Up, man. <laughs> Bless his heart. Bless his heart. Bruh. <laughs> All right. So we really appreciate everyone for coming in and uh participating. Y'all ain't nothing but family. We we love y'all. We we Love when y'all come on, and this is our Friday meetup. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Uh, cuz you want to send them shout outs, yeah. Thank you, Fishbone, for coming in and telling your business. We appreciate that. So, Creek can deflect from telling any of his business. We love that so much right. about him. So, thank you right. all for coming in. Thank you, Hill. Thank you, Darren, the level approach. Thank you, Miss Christina. Thank you, DJ Excel, for coming in with them beautiful eyes tonight, trying to mesmerize an old gal like me before I go to sleep. Good yeah. night, oh, <laughs> cousin Les. Thank you for coming in. Brother in law came in earlier. Thank you so much. Also, Miss Marla. Miss Marla was hanging in on the phone, giving us a little comments. We appreciate you coming in on all the shows and commenting. Thank you, those uh, Facebook individuals as well who came in, cousin Craig. Uh, that's not what's his name, Nate from upstate. I had to get the rhyme together, Nate from upstate, right? Thank you for coming in as and, well, and Miss me Amelia. D, me, D, and also Dexter, uh, was on there. And uh, I'm just trying to help y'all, cuz that's it. Uh, well, I'm it was... at, you got the other one. Um, okay. thank you so much, Yummy Gummy. Thank you so much. That's so cute. I'm, I might have to use that. I can see, see if I can pick me up a date this week. Um, thank oh, you God. also to. Um, who was that person that came in? Oh, um, who was that person? We had a lot of comments tonight, y'all. We have a lot of comments. We thank y'all so much. Cover Girl. Cover Girl was on for a while. She must got tired of us. We must got on her nerves. But thank you for coming in. Hopefully we'll see you again for our next show as well. Did, did you get Miss Christina? I got her a long time ago because she asked for where it was DJ XL, and I said he oh, was yeah, out. Being, I said yeah, you was out being toxic. Yeah. <laughs> Always and then, stay toxic. And then, uh, <laughs> did you get Miss Amelia? Stay toxic. Miss Amelia, Amelia. Yep. So thank you and, so much for coming in. We appreciate anybody on the Facebook side. Free. Uh, oh yeah, we forgot Dougie. Uh, sis. I mean, I uh, Dougie. Oh, I did. You, you need to catch up with your old age, sir. No, he said that. He said, y'all forgot said, Dougie. I forgot you. Oh, well, Dougie, oh. you know, coming to the show, you went to Morocco, now go be a hoe. Then that's it for the night. I'm tired. I'm sleepy. What, was I'm that Bars? That was Bars. I'm hitting the rhyme. Produced by DJ XL, engineered by Creek. So thank you so much for coming in. We have our Wednesday show coming up, Brooding on Rap Show on Street Tactics, where you see this lovely panel yet again. That's on here, DJ Concrete, our executive producer, DJ Excel. They pop in and tell everybody they garbage mostly. We appreciate him as well. <laughs> and our regular tactians who give negative zeros. 
as well. So thank you all for coming in. We have our Wednesday show, 9.30-ish. We was on time-ish. My cousin thought he was going to play me, but I was already sitting at the laptop doing work. You did surprise me because you got me tonight. Yeah, he thought he was going to get yeah. me. So now I start doing work at 9 o'clock, so I'll be ready. So oh, we thank you all oh. for coming in. Thank you all. Make sure you send us some cash app. My tuition is due by yep. Monday. We need some cash app. Please give us some cash app. Yeah, it's the uh, names down in the cash app names down there at the bottom. And Excel's got his at the top. Can you give us your, your social media platform, Excel? Since you got so many fans that look for you on the uh, relationship show now. I ain't got no fans. Hat lies in deception. You catch me on Instagram, Excel twelve hundred. Same as the, you know, what I mean, E X E L one two zero zero. Mm. The, the photography page, XL Flicks, E X C E L F L I X, and the clothing line, cash underscore is underscore king underscore clothing LLC, all on Instagram. All right, Miss. Okay, sir, executive producer, mm. give us your social media platforms. I know you got the little dirt bike thing. What's all that? Um, Street Tactics Radio on Instagram, Street Tactics Music on Instagram, and DJ Concrete as well on Instagram, and Street Tactics MTB on Instagram. Can you tell us what's your brand, the shirt you have on? Who? Me? You! Because I done forgot. Is it a teddy bear? Is it Winnie the Pooh? What is it? Yeah, it's a little teddy bear with a shade and his coffee. Uh, I forgot his name. I forgot the name of the brand. Um, XL, I'm sorry. XL, Dougie said back up. He want to see your shirt because he may want to purchase it. Oh, no. This is just one of the shirts I wear to go DJ. He just uh, got my name on there. Okay. This ain't so the Captain there King, you There you go, Dougie. So I had him back up. That, that's what's on the shirt. Thank you so much. Cousin, what kind of watch you got on, y'all? Oh, no. This is a, um iPhone. iPhone-y. It's like, no, it's an iPhone Ultra watch. That's the big oh, one. That's big that dog. money right there. You big that's dog. That big money. <laughs> that's <laughs> big that's money right there. You the big dog. No, I was a I need y'all cash I need I'm a wonderful I person. Check my heart. I need to check my heart, my blood pressure. Can y'all send me some cash app so I can buy the watch like my cousin? I knew that's what it was. That's why I was being smart. I can't afford it. It was a gift. Cash oh. is king. That's what I'm talking about. What's the little... Oh. Okay, that's um the cartoon from back in the day, like Betty. Yeah, I mean, not uh, Betty. Yeah, Richie was, uh, Rich. Yeah, Richie, Richie Rich. Rich. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I thought there was two breasts, but you know how you do. So. I hey, you no, my Hello Titty shirts. I ain't made none of them in a while. Hello Titty. Yeah. yeah. You know uh, how it's all is. Come on. Come made on. Hello Kitty. Oh, okay. You already right. know it wasn't Hello Kitty. <laughs> <laughs> so thank y'all for coming in. Please make sure you continue to share the podcast. We will have it edited and then back up because that's what our executive producer have to do. Make sure you continue to share. We'll see you at 9 30 on Wednesday for a brutally on swap show. If you have any friends or foes that want to send a music, please have them send it before the day and the minute of the show because it prolongs the show when we don't yes. have our MP3s and we we, we have an 11 o'clock deadline. Right. And have thick skin because if it's trash, I'm going to tell you. Right. When you got all the home. Thick skin. We don't want to review professional artists because we know they're getting it. We want to review the indie individuals. So thank you all for coming in. Good night. Have a wonderful weekend. Make sure y'all get y'all some so we can talk about your business next Friday. Hey, Good man. Night. Good night. Good night. We will see y'all. Much love. That was a lot of front. No, nah, cause it's C. Okay, that's C. Loser for you. <laughs> Ain't nothing fake like a homie who swore that they had your back. There's some dirt you get clapped. Now they wondering where they at. Uh. Mama, he tries and I never the hatred. So I had to get back to basics. Uh, money coming in and it's going out. I ain't trying to hear what you're talking about. It's Willie Ball. Y'all niggas acting like old. women too. Gossiping, uh, it's new, it's old, woman, but it's new. Damn. Okay. Am I really your target? Bullet about to get to the album, I'm never dodging. I'm all like James Harden. Yeah. All I see is red. He, he was on off here. Like a rocket. This I saw him. Oh yeah. Like Willie Ball. Thank you for coming in. Call an A-Rap. Let these niggas watch. Call a Maytag. Homie, I don't play that. Life with decision. You better face that. All right, cousin Mo. Much love. All right. Get deflected. Pass the blood. I'ma need to smoke. I don't need it. Just.